Okay, we've seen that the gambler is doomed in a fair game, but it takes him forever to meet his doom, which is reassuring. And the thing that we've stumbled on there is that we have infinite expectation. It's the expectation, the expected time for him to go broke, which he certainly will, is infinite. So let's look at this example of uh, these examples of infinite expectation and see how we can cope with them. One of the most famous is known as the Martingale paradox or bet doubling paradox. It's a way to win against an unfair game. So let's think about how would you beat an unfair roulette table? Uh, well, um, what I suggest you do is you bet $10 on blank, black. Now you know that the odds are 9 19 a little less than half of winning, but you might win. So my proposed strategy is you bet the $10 and if you win, go home with the $10. That's that. If you lose, bet $20. Okay. Now, if you win the second bet, that means that you've won $20 on the second bet. And of course, you've lost $10 on the first bet. And I want you to go home with the net winnings of 20 minus 10 or $10. Okay. If you lose the $20 bet, then I want you to double again and bet $40. And if you win this third bet of $40, then I want you to go home with the 40 minus 20 you lost on the second bet minus 10 you lost on the first bet, or a net of $10 again. And this goes on. By continuing to double your bet, your net win is going to be $10 when you finally win for the first time. And you're certain to eventually win because you can't keep betting forever. The probability of betting more than k times is uh, 10 19ths to the half, that is 10 19ths is the probability that you're going to lose a bet and you need to lose 10 times in order to uh, bet more than 10 times, more than k times. So it's 10 to the 10 19th to the k, which is going to zero as k approaches infinity. So paradoxically, we got this a similar situation to the gambler's ruin. You're certain to win in an unfair, unfair game. You're certain to win $10. How can you possibly beat an unfair game like that? And you better not be able to in reality or the casinos couldn't survive. Well, there's a hitch. And the hitch is when we ask how much money you need in order to execute this bet doubling strategy, what's the expected amount of your last bet? Well, that's easy to calculate. <clears throat> you expect to, you're going to bet $10 on the first bet. And if you win, uh, you'll stop, and so that'll be the last bet with probability 9 nineteenths. The probability that you stop on the second bet is 9 nineteenths of losing the first bet uh, times 10 nine, uh, of, of winning the second bet times 10 nineteenths of losing the first bet, or times 20, which is the amount you bet. The probability of betting three times uh, and winning the $40 is uh, losing the first two times with 10 nineteenths squared uh, probability times 9 nineteenths, the probability of winning on the on that third bet, and so on. So if we re, could re uh, phrase that series, it's 10 times 10 times 2 to the 10 19th times 10 times 2 squared to the 10 19th squared, um, and I've factored out the 9 tenths which appears in each of these terms. Uh, well, let's put the twos inside the the exponents here. So I've got 2 times uh, 10 to the 19th, 2 squared times 10 to the 19th squared. The general form is 10 times 10 to the 20 19ths times 10 to the 20 19ths squared plus 10 to the 20 19ths cubed and so on, the whole thing times 9 tenths. But this is obviously infinite because every one of these terms is bigger than 10. In fact, they keep getting much bigger than 10. Uh, because 20 over 19 is bigger than 1, and you keep squaring it, you get bigger and bigger numbers, and there's a factor of 10 here every time, and the fact that the whole thing is by 9 nineteenths couldn't make less difference. This is a rapidly divergent series. So the amount of money that you expect to have to bet on your last bet is an infinite amount of money, and that is where the paradox comes from. To be certain to win in this unfair game, you need an infinite bankroll. And of course, uh, if you have a finite bankroll, then it's easy to do the calculation and your expectation goes back to being negative, which is what it ought to be in, uh, in, in an unfair game uh, if you're not making absurd, absurd assumptions. So we've now seen two situations where infinite expectations come up. This bet doubling example where a win is certain, but the expected last bet is infinite. Uh, 
we saw previously with the gambler's ruin that ruin is certain in the fair game with no limit on uh, the target, but it's expected to take forever. Uh, another example that's described uh, in a class problem you'll work on is that if you take a random variable and you repeat it uh, and you sample it once uh, and whatever value it is, hold that as your target and then sample it again and again independently until you beat the original target. And it turns out that no matter what the distribution of the random variable is, the expected number of tries to beat the initial value you got is infinite and you'll work out a class problem of that concretely for uh, a geometric distribution. Uh, and uh, in, in general, another situation that can happen, and you'll see an example of this as well in class problems, is that you may have a situation where the expectation is finite, but the variance is infinite. And that's going to mess you up because you can't apply uh, our version of the weak law of large numbers, which requires finite. So, in terms of coping with infinite expectation, um, we have to face the following things. The average of repeated trials does not converge. There's no weak law of large numbers when the expectation is infinite. But one way you can hope to cope with it is that even if the expectation is infinite, it may be uh, that if, the, if you take the square root of the random variable you're examining, that could go finite. There's an, there was an example like that in a class problem, and there'll be another one uh, with today's problems. So, uh, the, and of course the weak law will then will apply to the square root of r, assuming that the expectation of the square root of r is finite and its variance is finite. Uh, and if that isn't, doesn't work enough, uh, whack r uh, with a log to make it even smaller uh, to force, to, uh, to get a hold of the rate of, uh, of the values that it's producing and get them to converge to an average. And so you could try seeing if the expectation of the log of r was finite, and you could then apply the weak law of large numbers to log of r. And in the end, what are those, the, that business of taking root of r or log of r amounts to abstractly is that you're really analyzing the rate of divergence uh, that r takes on. So you get a, a, a something that's like the weak law that's not saying that you converge to an average, but it's saying that the average grows at a certain uh, manageable, predictable rate as you repeat the trials. So the moral over the, of the story overall is that infinite expectation comes up regularly in extreme situations, uh, but it is manageable.